Uh, I'd like to turn to uh, back to, uh, to to London to Tarek Ali, who is there, veteran journalist, uh, commentator, and activist. He was born in Pakistan and, and lives in London. Uh, Tarek, your reaction to the uh, election of Barack Obama and to what it might mean for uh, your native land, Pakistan? Well, I mean, my reaction uh, was not so different to that of other people you've already um, uh, um, <clears throat> interviewed. I mean, historically, the fact that there's going to be a black family in the White House can't be underestimated in terms of the impact that will have on black consciousness in the United States. I think it's important in its own right for that reason. As for what the policies are going to be, the situation is pretty depressing. I mean, Obama, during his campaign, Campaign didn't promise very much. Uh, uh, basically, talked in cliches and synthetic slogans like "change we can believe in." No one knows what that change is. In foreign policy terms, during the debates, his um, what he said was basically a continuation of uh, the Bush-Cheney policies. And in relation to Afghanistan, what he said was worse than McCain, that we will actually, we should take troops out of Iraq, send them into Afghanistan, and if necessary, go in and take out people inside Pakistan without informing that government. Now, I think once he is in power, and sees the intelligence reports coming in from Afghanistan, uh, he will realize that that's not a serious option. I mean, the British are already saying that sending in more troops isn't going to help because the war is lost. Uh, the United States uh, intelligence uh, agencies are already involved in panic discussions with the people they're fighting, the neo-Taliban, to try and persuade them to join the coalition, which they're refusing to do as long as there are foreign troops there. So escalating the war I don't think is a serious option. And if he does it, it will be a very, very serious mistake on the same level in scale as invading Iraq. So he would be very ill-advised to do it, and I think some of the people around him will probably tell him that that was a foolish and intemperate uh, remark in the heat of an election battle, so not to seem too wimpish, since he was already supposedly opposed to the war on Iraq, uh, and that he will pull back from that. I think the key is what he's going to do uh, in Iraq. Is Iraq, as Joe Biden wants, going to be balkanized with permanent U.S. bases in northern Iraq and a Kurdish area, more or less, kept going as a U.S.-Israel protectorate? Or are they going to do what the U.S. traditionally does long before the war on terror, which is find local relays? And in that case, I think they'll have to do a deal with Iran. And I think the m most critical interview with Ahmadinejad on his last visit to New York was uh, uh, Amy questioning him about his position on uh, the Iraq war, etc. He got a very easy ride on CNN and other shows, which indicates that they will be asking Iran to play a role in stabilizing Iraq, and they will be asking Pakistan to do the same in Afghanistan. That is more traditional U.S. policy. Uh, and if Obama moves in that direction, it will mean withdrawing troops and ha having an exit strategy in Afghanistan. Tarek Ali, we're also joined in Washington, D.C., by the Iraqi blogger and political analyst Raj Jarrar, Iraqi consultant for American Friends Service Committee. Um, Ryad, the latest news today, uh, at least six people have been killed, more than 20 wounded in several bombings around Baghdad. At least 30 Iraqis have died, 80 wounded since Monday. Um, and you might say that Barack Obama's president today, because in 2002 he made that speech against the war in Iraq. That, I think, won him the Democratic nomination against Hillary Clinton. I, I don't think the Democratic Party emphasizes this now, but that was the main difference. She and the other leading opponents of Barack Obama in the presidential campaign voted for the invasion, and he spoke against it. What are your hopes, Riot? Well, um, I think the Obama campaign did deliver a message to the public in the U.S. that he will be the one to end the occupation. 
uh, and wherever I travel around the U.S., people do have the impression that Obama will be the president who will withdraw the troops. Uh, the uh, campaign was very vague about describing a troops withdrawal, all the troops, within 16 months. Now, the fine print of the campaign uh, suggests the opposite, actually. The fine print suggests that Obama will continue uh, the same policy through leaving what he calls res residual force, uh, the thing that both uh, Bush and uh, McCain wanted to leave uh, indefinitely. Uh, so, I don't have a lot of uh, hope based on the statements. Uh, no, no one knows what what will happen in the next few months, whether Obama will, um, you know, unveil this uh, progressive face that everyone is waiting to see, or whether he will continue the same policy. Now, on the shorter term, I think there is a major difference that um, I'm happy that the Obama-Biden campaign have came out to criticize the long-term agreement. Uh, on their website, uh, there is a very strong statement asking the Bush administration to either submit uh, any agreement with Iraq to the Congress or postpone it until the next administration and Congress. I think this is a very important um, uh, step in the, on the short uh, term. Uh, but um, I don't have a lot of hope regarding the statements on the long term. I hope that there will be a modification of that policy to a new policy that is based on a complete withdrawal that leaves no permanent bases, no mercenaries in Iraq. Because without that policy, I think the situation in Iraq will continue to deteriorate. Uh, and I'd like to come back to Mahmoud uh, uh, Mandami here with us uh, in the studio. You've heard now quite a bit of skepticism about uh, the, the potential in the new Obama presidency. Your thoughts, uh, I think y you're sensing a little bit more optimism. Well, I mean, my sensing is that uh, we have to place the man uh, within the context. Uh, I'm equally skeptical of those who believe Obama is capable of everything. Uh, as I am of those who believe he is incapable of anything. Uh, he'll simply be muzzled by, by, by context. Um, I, I think that, you know, this campaign began as a campaign on, on question of peace. Uh, he began as a peace candidate and ended up as a redistribution candidate. Uh, foreign policy had the front seat at the beginning and had the back seat towards the end of the campaign. So we don't really know much. What we do know uh, is that uh, any, any president who wants to make an impact on history uh, uh, can, can only do so at a moment of crisis. And this is a moment of profound crisis, uh, domestically and internationally. Uh, Obama's uh, campaign uh, uh, announcements, I believe, give us very little clue as to what he's going to do. His appointments, I agree, give us some clue, and there is reason for concern. But at the same time, uh, uh, there'll be, there'll be uh, returns coming in if, if the appointments lead to the policies that we fear uh, they may lead to. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a time of possibilities, and it's a time to organize and put the pressure. We have to leave it there. I want to thank you very much for being with us. Uh, last question, though. Do you think the movements that elected Obama can, without the Obama machine, remarkable online and on-the-ground organizing, what, 10 million email lists, we were getting texts and emails every couple of hours, can reconstitute itself without that? Because now that will be the state. How do people show their—express their positions if they differ from the state? Has the movement been absorbed into the state? Um, look, uh, th there is a remarkable uh, uh, difference between the youth movement of the 60s, uh, which mainly organized outside the system, uh, and the youth movement which has brought Obama to power, uh, because this movement has organized within the system to reform the system. Uh, uh, Obama keeps on saying uh, that this movement must not go away, that change hasn't come, that this is the beginning of change. Now, will the candidate be able to tame the movement, or will the movement uh, be able to, 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 to stamp itself to some extent? We'll have to candidate. leave that question there, Mahmoud Mandani, and all of our roundtable. Thanks so much for joining us. I'll be in Montreal tomorrow night at McGill University. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Thanks for joining us.